I'm the son of an oil man. I lived overseas all of my life. I was very fortunate in both having several graduate degrees and being a Marine Corps infantry officer, Marine Corps intelligence officer, and then a clandestine intelligence case officer. I've programmed imagery satellites. I've helped steal signals code books. I've done counterintelligence. I'm basically intimately familiar with the way in which the U.S. government does or does not do the craft of intelligence. What you need to know is I'm a spy saying spying doesn't work. It's costing you $1.2 billion a week to produce the president's daily brief for a guy that can't read. People don't realize this, apart from the fact that NSA is 1950s mindsets with 1970s technologies, SCIC completely screwed up Trailblazer, uh, Echelon is baloney, 80% uh, of your signals intelligence comes from analysis of patterns. So you don't need to violate privacy, all you need to know is that Schmuckhead is calling Afghanistan once a week. General Shinseki knew exactly what was needed to make Iraq go right, and Paul Wolfowitz lied to Congress and said they'll receive us like liberators and stuff. If I had been General Shinseki, I would have grabbed Wolfowitz by the neck and thrown him down the steps of Capitol Hill. You don't let people lie like that. It's unprofessional to confuse loyalty with integrity, and we have had a failure of generalship in America. Our generals have been too eager to keep their stars and not eager enough to think for themselves and uphold the Constitution. Smedley Butler, the highest decorated Marine, said, war is a racket. War is a racket. War is a racket, and the only reason it's happening is because the American public is lethargic. Blog that. You are the Paul Revere's and Patrick Henry's of our generation. Bottom-up horizontal connection is key. Sharing at all levels, not top-down control. Public intelligence and influence is about to take off. We are about to bury rule by secrecy. Civil affairs is the focal point. The intelligence guys need to go back in their box. Bloggers, not informants, are key. The FBI is about to try and hire 2,000 informants in a Soviet police-style approach to security. That's idiocy. If you bloggers self-organize and attach yourself like leeches to specific issues, corporations, organizations, challenges, whatever. You will be the intelligence Minutemen of this century. The power is in your hands. There aren't enough guns to kill us all, and Halliburton can't build the jails fast enough to keep us down. Bloggers, as Linux is organized, where you grab onto an issue or something, and you are part of a structured citizen journalism blogging thing that lets no evil doing go unnoticed, that rules. So I think we're at a turning point. I think we're at the very beginning of a historic tidal shift in power restoring the Constitution. I don't know how many of you are following this, but the Comptroller General has told Congress the United States of America is insolvent. We're out of Schlitz. We literally have no money to make it to the next decade. Now, there's some very easy solutions. I can eliminate all income taxes tomorrow and have more than enough money to fund the government by using some other guy's bright idea. We tax the Federal Reserve at point triple zero six, doubles our money until we decide to put them out of business permanently, because we certainly should not have central banks. We've put together an electoral reform pledge, and it's my view that any member of Congress, any member of the Senate that refuses to sign both the constitutional pledge, supporting the Constitution, and the electoral reform pledge should be put out of business. And I believe that will be 95% of all of these people. It may be time to literally dump Congress on its ass and start over. The government has gotten stupid to the point that it can't write a statement of work. And so they ask the contractors to write a statement of work. And the contractors write a statement of work saying, you need more of what I haven't been able to sell. And the government says, oh, yeah, right, good. Put it in the budget. This is real shit. I can crack all 10 of the top-level threats to humanity in less than 25 years for less than one-third of what the world is spending on the military. Blog that. And I will tell you the price of buying back the United States government. It's $500 million a year. In the early 90s, Newt Gingrich and the Republicans got together. Their plan is now on the street. It's been exposed by a Columbia professor. They concluded that they could buy the United States government from school board to state house to White House for $300 million a year, and by golly, they did. And every single member of Congress is impeachable for having abdicated their Article I responsibilities under the Constitution and serving as foot soldiers uh, for the president and his mendacious vice president. If you confiscate all the wealth in the world, which I do not advocate, 
all you have is a five dollar bill for every one of the five billion poor on the planet for what we have spent on the iraq war i could have given a free cell phone to every one of the five billion poor on the planet i could have taken the ten percent residual capabilities on dod satellites abandoned communication satellites and i could have provided free t1 to the southern hemisphere blog that that's the kind of stuff we have to do because if we don't do that those five billion people instead of producing wealth that stabilizes the earth are going to produce plagues epidemics criminal gangs, drugged up people. Ralph Peters, a friend of mine, and the bottom line here is the only path to wine women and wealth for badasses anywhere on the planet that have no money is guns. And what's happening here is we're at the very beginning. We're just starting to come out of our little eggshell. When the industrial era began, it broke the connection between kinship and trust. And it started treating people as commodities. And then we lost sight of our government and we allowed the corporations to buy the government. The United States of America no longer represents we the people. But you can change that. The reason it's not working today is because we have a military industrial complex that profits from secrecy and war and it does not profit from efficiency and peace. Blog that. The bottom line here is that central banking is an evil cancer. These people are selling us credit they don't have so they can take profits they don't deserve out of our pockets. That's nuts. The United States government is constitutionally charted to print money on the good faith and credit of all of us and not pay interest. Why are we being such fools? Well, unfortunately, if you fight them, you get assassinated. Lincoln and Kennedy were both about to print money and not borrow from the banks. I can't connect those two dots, but I can tell you they're side by side. But the reality is the federal government is broken in every possible way. And it's going to be localized, bottom-up resilience networks they are going to save us. That's where you guys come in. Our educational system stinks. It beats the creativity out of kids by the time they're in the fourth grade. It forces you to become a blogger or hacker in order to become creative. So you guys are the lifeboat. We've gone from America the beautiful to America the shit. Now, I believe we need to start blogging retrospective impeachments. I'm not saying we need to hang them or tar them or feather them, just out them. I think it's time for citizen investigative journalism to go deep and go back and go current. And people need to understand they can't get away with this stuff. There is absolutely no lack of solution, and there is also no lack of money. What is lacking is the popular political will to exercise our God-given right to be in charge. I got thrown off Fox News for saying the global war on terror wasn't real. Well, it's not. Okay? I mean, until we can get to one man, one bullet for the top 6,000, we can contain the next level and we can provide a quality of life for everybody on the planet at the lowest level, we're not going to get it. Um, the Air Force solution for terrorism is to kill one guy in an entire village which of course creates 100 to 200 additional terrorists because of that indiscriminate war crime. It's just nuts. And it's nuts because the media isn't doing their job, and so it falls to you. And my dream is to have someone adopt every zip code and start doing that weekly report for their zip code. And then those little reports will start having babies, and it'll start spreading. Your government is stupid, and they're stupid deliberately. The intelligence community does not do open source information because they like to think that the cabinet departments are doing their open source information. That's not true. The cabinet departments don't know how to do decision support. What they know how to do is take stakeholder interests and turn them into policy that increases budget share. That is not what I call reality-based budgeting. Politics today has gotten so dirty it's not worth anybody's time if they've got a brain. Well, I don't have a brain. I have a soul. And I believe that America needs to get back in the business of managing itself. I am absolutely certain that central banks are an evil. Central banks are screwing us all. Orwell had it right. We are pigs being harvested for profits. I do believe there are secret societies, although, you know, given a choice between conspiracy and incompetence, I generally go with incompetence. Um, the Bilderberg Group, I just saw a list of who attended the last time. And it, it's, a, it's, it's almost a list of nobodies who want to be somebodies combined with somebodies on their way down. 
Um, you know, I'm not that impressed. Uh, these people think they're the movers and the shakers. They're only the movers and the shakers as long as you let them be the movers and the shakers. But I spent 18 years trying to help secret government agencies get in touch with unclassified information. And Tom Attlee sent me an email, and he had this little signature blog where Buckminster Fuller said, don't try and heal a broken system. Create a new system that replaces it. So I'm honored to be here uh, to set the tone for you guys. And my bottom line is don't waste your time on the federal government. It's going away. There are 27 secessionist movements. There are nine distinct nations in North America. I anticipate some virtual separation in the republic. And I think that you're going to find that, like Vermont, for example, is all of a sudden going to be seen by the rest of America as exactly where we want to be, or Seattle. And so that's called the spike theory of change. As soon as one state gets it perfect, it's going to spread like wildfire.